Welcome to Venusian Soul Tarot. Today I'm back with a timeless pick a card reading and it's going to be Wisdom of the Crown Chakra. So I want you to cast your gaze over these cards and ask your higher self which cards have a message for you. We have pile number one, pile two, pile three and pile four. If you need to pause the video to meditate further, please do so. But for those of you who are ready, let's get started. Hi group one. So for those of you drawn to these cards, I get a really strong energy of tapping into the universal heart, tapping into perhaps divine consciousness, a vaster realm of experience, because I feel as though for some of you, it's almost like you may be receiving messages to dissolve your the mind or dissolve the influence of the mind because it's restrictive of the heart and soul. Now, for this particular group, either I feel for some the tendency to stay where you've been because I can see this, this attachment to where you've been or how you've done things, perhaps even a specific, like an older connection. And I feel as though your crown chakra may be delivering messages or receiving guidance around moving on from certain situations. For some of you, I see you leaving behind a soulmate uh, connection or a close intimate friendship relationship that you've outgrown in order to experience more abundance and more love elsewhere. Because I feel as though I just get a really restrictive energy that you're not going to be able to live perhaps your highest potential or your best life in that context. Now, I also feel for some of you, it's breaking attachment to the mind in terms of preconceptions. It could be that you have a specific expectation of, I'm going to work hard and do this and this will be the outcome. But it's almost as though your expectation of the outcome is limiting what the divine wants to bring in for you. So there's this need to either melt away or reduce the influence of uh, of the mind and the mental body in order for the soul to take precedence for others of you. I feel like you may be perfectionistic at times, which, which can have its benefits. You can produce really wonderful things because of your high standards, but you may be very, very self-critical. Like I feel, and I was hearing before something around breaking ties with concepts of morality, like right and wrong, very rigid, like black and white thinking. Because it's almost as though it's not allowing the divine to move you in the direction it wants. I almost see the tower isn't on uh, or in these cards, but it's almost as though the divine wants to kind of flip things around and mess things up. I just see you like straightening everything and the divine's here doing this because it wants to set you free. And what happens when everything gets messed up, it, it looks like a mess, but it's a divine mess is what I'm hearing. And it enables you to gain some traction or it opens up a new doorway and new pathways. And I feel in many areas of your life, because I do feel for many of you, you're heading, if you're currently single, or even if you're not, I just feel this movement towards a new love uh, with this 10 of cups. I just feel there's, there's a better opportunity for you. And I see you working really hard, but the way in which you're doing it may not be as effective. There may be a different pathway. For many of you, I feel like you have a specific talent or skill that if you're not currently working on, I feel as though you may be receiving divine, um, divine guidance around really investing and mastering this skill. Sometimes with perfectionism as well, you see it in those that are very talented. Oftentimes you, there's a talent or there's this ability to create something grand and you sense it in your deeper self, but then it's like the mind grabs hold of that vision and then tries to like organize it. Okay. So you need to write eight hours a day and it needs to be like this, but then the magic of that writing is lost. Does that make sense? It's almost as though the divine wants more freedom and the ability to flow through you more easily and readily, not necessarily, I feel like for some of you, you may be in the wrong connection or you're focused on perhaps, again, I shouldn't use the word wrong, but a limiting relationship or a limiting connection. And I do feel as though the divine is trying to move you toward a really beautiful 10 of cups type union. But as far as work is concerned, and especially around your divine talents and your life purpose, I feel for most of you, it's not that you're on the wrong path or wrong track. It's that 
the way in which you're approaching it or the way in which it's going to manifest is different than what you envision. And what spirit is saying to me is your mind is too constricted that it can't flow through. Your concepts, your concept of right and wrong or how you should do things isn't the most effective path and doesn't allow for, you know how they say when the divine works, it works through miracles and magic. It's not linear. It makes, sometimes it makes no sense. Sometimes things fall together in the most unprobable or improbable circumstance. And that's why we need to have that mental freedom and that space to allow that to happen. Now for this particular group, I think your guardian angels are like really not shouting at you, but really communicating loudly and clearly around moving on for some of you. Again, I think it may be from a connection or the focus of a connection and healing for others of you. It may be both. It may be how you're approaching what you do. It may be really committing to your divine skill and purpose and withdrawing some energy away from career. But the human gift in this deck is a card of accepting our human frailty, our our humanity, rather than kind of having these really high expectations and ideals, can you be tender with yourself? So there is this need to almost soften how you perceive yourself or how you engage with your work and your divine mission. And it's very much as well with Cosmic Heart, it's coming from the heart and soul and a non-linear fashion rather than the mind and its judgments and preconceptions. And with well and goddess, again, it's like the divine is trying to shake things up and set you free, have you dance again. For some of you, you may have just become really rigid or your life feels a bit stale. And it's like spirit wants to bring in all these blessings and this change. But in order for that to happen, there needs to be a healing or a clearing at the mental level. It's almost, I, I feel for some of you as well, it's a message around letting go, letting go of how you think things should be, how you think things should have been versus how they truly are. And with the dissolving light, it's like surrendering into the light, surrendering to the light of what you love, to the person and the being that you are. Now, with Blessings of the Kite Dancer, this is my favorite card in this deck. And we have 2911. And this is a card of you having a specific gift or talent that is going to take flight in this lifetime, but may require a lot of discipline and mastery. And this coupled with the Eight of Coins lets me know, for most of you, I think you know exactly what this is. You may be writers, you may be speakers, you may be healers, but you do have some sort of innate... Uh, talent that you can gain mastery over that may, you may have had or focused on in many incarnations. It could also be dancing for some of you, but there's this sense of either you're so committed that it's like it's becoming rigid and the, the joy and the love and the fun is being lost, which obviously takes away some of that inspiration and the energy behind your works, or there's a message for you to focus on this rather than perhaps, you know, your nine to five or a more mainstream path. We also have her hand gentles the war. And this is a card of the divine coming in and ending a struggle for you. And again, I feel like it's a mental struggle. It's a struggle with how you perceive of yourself. It's opening the mind and expanding the vision so that you can receive what's here for you. But in order for that to happen, in order for this justice and this balancing and I want to say harmony, you need to let go of whatever you're holding on to. Again, for some of you, it's a, a pertinent connection, a soulmate. A, it doesn't have to be a romantic soulmate, although for some of you, I think it is because there's this 10 of cups here as well. Could even be the memory of a karmic soulmate, someone that's still active in your energy field that, and it could be also referring to you letting go of the feeling like this was my person. They were the one that got away. Uh, the expectations you may have had around this connection because the divine is saying to you, we have this waiting for you and it's not going to come when you expect it. You're not going to see it. It's going to come out of this, out of the blue. And it comes as well when you've lightened your energy. Because again, I see these people kind of dancing. There's a really free energy Some of you definitely may be dancers or love dancing. Okay, Wheel of Fortune. Well and Goddess and Wheel of Fortune give me a similar energy. But again, letting go of whatever this represents for you 
it could also be a, a really stagnant career path or the focus on a stagnant career path so you can dedicate yourself to mastery of your talents and your purpose in life. And, and I'm not saying you need to necessarily leave that job or quit it, but energetically there needs to be a loosening of the grip or your focus on it. Because with judgment, it's like you're calling judgment on where you've been. But I feel for this group, at times there can be a tendency to get stuck in the judgment. To get stuck in the the mind, the conceptualizing of, oh, this person treated me badly. This situation should have unfolded in this manner. And spirit is saying, can you just let all of that uh, let all of that go. Can you be willing to ride the wave? Be willing to surrender to the dance of life, rather than needing every step orchestrated. It's like you're learning to freestyle. And again, all these judgments and preconceptions and expectations are dissolving. And what that brings in is great love from every direction. I do think for those of you who are really wanting a beautiful union, that's on the table. But again, it's not going to come when you expect it. And it comes after some sort of release and letting go and a healing of the mind and the mental body. And I also think the divine is saying to you, and you may be receiving this intuitively through the crown chakra, that there's other options. There's so much available. Perhaps you also hear the message, your life is too small. What, what you have within you, your potential, your dreams, your desires is far grander than what you're currently living and perceiving. And it's almost like spirit wants to open all these doors for you and wants you to just explore. And with the human gift, again, if you stumble, if you fail, I don't really believe in failure, but I just saw 1111. So definitely divine union for those of you who are after that. But if you kind of trip and stumble and things don't work out the way you desire they're working out perfectly in terms of the divine in terms of your soul and what your spirit desires your soul is having a great time it doesn't care about what you think is right and wrong it doesn't care about you know the plans you set 10 years ago oftentimes and these cards especially are showing a distinction between what you think your life should be versus what your soul feels what your soul wants and i feel as though your soul is almost being uh not trampled, but like suffocated. Your soul wants to expand and try all these different things and live at its highest potential, but it can't do so in this four of pentacles energy. And it needs the, the human or the physical element to release, to surrender. So that's all I have for you, group one. If this reading resonates, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Hi, group two. So for those of you drawn to these cards, I'm feeling the energy for some of you that you feel as though, or you have felt as though your life has been stripped bare, that you have lost something or multiple things you love, that it's like everything is just gone or ended or completed. But at the same time, what I feel with this Ten of Swords energy is that it's created movement. And it's almost as though you may be receiving messages from the crown chakra around the fact that that wasn't for you. You're moving towards, I feel, number one, tremendous success with your own ventures, your life purpose, your dreams, but also towards your soul tribe. Because with this three of cups, it's almost as though the divine has stepped in or you felt either you felt guided to or certain individuals have left your life but it's almost like they were never meant for you anyway or if they were it was more of a temporary kind of temporary connections or connections that only came in to teach you a lesson not long term and with this ten of swords i'm being shown i almost get more of a tower energy as well that everything was just wiped out or you've had these really painful situations in connections that were somewhat karmic short-lived unpredictable and i feel as though the divine may be sending you messages saying yes but these wounds have what gro have grown you into the empress they are what have allowed you to develop, to transform, to step into your power. And they've also paved the way for this next cycle, for your transformation, for what you want to do moving forward. And with this chariot as well, again, we get this energy of movement, progress. You may literally, after this Ten of Swords experience and energy, decided to move on completely. Just start, it's almost the energy of starting over. And that's why I was getting the sense of a tower. Like the divine has come in and wiped away everything and said, okay, now you're, you're strong enough and you have new vision for your life. It's time to build. It's time to create. So for some of you, if you're receiving guidance around 
I feel many of you have a huge dream or there's some sort of vision that you've always wanted to achieve in this lifetime around your life purpose, your skills, your talents. However, there could have been certain connections or I want to say karmic detours, although in truth they weren't really detours because they were helping to evolve and grow you into the being who was able to manifest this huge dream. When we have a really steep and powerful journey and a huge vision, often the learning curve is also really steep for us to reach that point, to grow to that level. And what the divine is saying, yes, there have been these losses and yes, you may really need to clear away the past, completely release those frequencies, but they also, they were also the stepping stone to what's coming next. And this next cycle, this next chapter is going to be beautiful beyond belief. And I do think for those of you who have felt very alone or very hurt and betrayed through relationship, it's almost an end of those difficult partnerships, connections, so that you can really be with those who support you and support your ideas and visions they're in alignment so you're moving away to manifest an entirely new life I feel for some of you you were exposed to a particular truth around perhaps multiple people a significant connection and it may have felt as though your world was crumbling or you lost everything is what I keep hearing but and technically you very well may have in a physical sense but you've also gained everything because what you have within you now is far more powerful than mere physicality. That alignment you have is so powerful that you're going to be able to, I'm hearing, achieve the impossible. Now we have a three of swords beneath the ten of swords. So again, there could have been a significant connection or partnership that ended that uh, made you feel as though I don't want to say everything was over, but to that level, like a really intense pain and feeling very much abandoned or alone as though, you know, this person completely betrayed you or they didn't. I feel like you may have been shocked by their behavior, their treatment, the ending, because with that magician, I keep feeling as though you saw a new side of this person. They revealed who they truly were to you. And this could be multiple people with this three of cups. You may literally have left everyone behind in terms of friendship, relationship. I just feel quite a toxic, toxic energy, but it's toxic with a karmic purpose is what I want to say. But again, who do you become after this pain? The Queen of Wands. You build, you transform. It also, I'm hearing, has stoked your inner fire. This pain and this loss, as difficult as it may be to be in and process, has made you aware that you can only rely on yourself or it's created that. And I mean, I'm not saying that you won't have connections in the future that are conducive and supportive to your well-being. You definitely will. And I see that here. But there's this sense that, it's initiated within you that fire and that independence to go after your dreams. It's letting you know, okay, yes, this was painful. Yes, I need to grieve and accept and move through this emotion, but it's not going, I'm not going to sacrifice my future and who I can be because of this. In fact, I think this has almost helped you leap and ascend to the next level. Or at least that's what spirit is saying. And perhaps there's messages or guidance coming through the crown chakra to envision this situation in this light, to empower yourself through how you see it. Although if you're still in the thick of this healing, obviously that will come with time. But with the lovers as well, it's meeting really beautiful, perhaps soulmates, soul tribe, soul contracts, ones that are conducive to your ideology or your desires. It could be you meet significant souls who are instrumental in supporting or helping you live your dreams, live your passion, live your purpose. Now with Holy Sisters, this is a message of finding like-minded souls, kindred spirits, uh, your soul tribe. So again, it's closing out certain difficult or karmic connections and relationships so you can find those who truly support and nourish your heart. And with Sisters of the Sacred Spiral, this is a concept that uh, manifestations happen in almost a spiral and at times we can be we can appear to be going backwards, but really it's helping us to go forward. It's almost like what I was seeing here in a difficult situation or what appears to be a setback may actually cause you to step into your power and take that leap, drive you forward. And that's exactly what's happening. So spirit is really saying, don't trust what your eyes and physical self are showing you. 
don't don't buy into illusion because the truth of the situation and what's actually happening is far more beautiful and far more blessed than you can either currently see or you just have no comprehension of the beauty and abundance that is coming towards you now we have she offers the sacred wine so drink i feel as though the divine and your crown may be giving you messages from the light messages of who you are what's possible what you can achieve and receive moving forward and not to limit yourself also not to shy away from your own power and your divine vision because again i feel for this group you may have this really strong idea dream some sort of concept of what you've always wanted to do and what that may look like and i feel as though certain connections or situations have fallen away that's enabling you to charge ahead with this queen of wands you may be a powerful healer, creative. Uh, you may be moving towards self-employment as well. But we see here from nothing to everything. Again, we get that sense of spirit and the divine coming in and wiping the slate clear so that perhaps situations or circumstances and opportunities that are more suited for you can pour in. So you can receive these blessings. It's almost as though in the past with this Ten of Swords and Three of Swords energy, there was no room or energetic space for what it was divinely meant for you. So for some of you, there may really be this wisdom coming through that, yes, I you're going through this difficult period. Yes, it may feel as though you've literally lost everything. For some of you, perhaps there's been some sort of break or ending where you've had financial loss. You've had to move house, relocate. Uh, it could be a, a severing of ties with kind of family friendship, but the divine is saying from, from this ending, from this apparent loss and lack springs everything you've de desired because from nothing to everything as well with, uh, sacred convergence, everything's coming together, but it's coming together in a way that is sacred, that's in alignment with the divine and with your sacred purpose. So I feel as though spirit had to come in and create almost this clean slate or this tower moment so that you could experience not only everything that's meant for you, especially in terms of soul connections, whether it be romantic or friendship, meeting significant soul, con soul connections where I feel these individuals or these situations were not allowing them to come in and you may have needed to move or shift in order to meet them. But I also feel this is your life purpose. This is creating drive and momentum towards what you love to do because we also have the impossible made possible. So again, there's some sort of dream or vision that's coming coming to life that you may have temporarily given up on. You may have been distracted with others, but I feel this queen of wands has set her sides on this impossible dream again. And the divine is saying, and your crown chakra is really trying to support and encourage you to keep going. Use any pain or disappointment to kind of fuel that fire and don't give up on what you believe is your divine destiny and divine mission, because this beautiful dream is available uh, to you and for you and it is coming towards you although it may look as though it's coming in a really messy roundabout way you may feel as though you're going backwards everything's falling apart your life you know you've you've lost everything you've worked for but the divine is saying everything that you you need is within you you've taken the lessons with you yes you may have experienced literal loss or physical loss but that was all nothing anyway it wasn't yours to keep and it wasn't ever going to support you, serve you or lead to happiness. And now there's this space for all these beautiful visions and blessings to come to be. So that's all I have for you. If this reading resonates, please like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Hi, group three. So for those of you drawn to these cards, straight away, I'm feeling as though you may be star seeds and part of your divine mission is to anchor in certain frequencies on this planet and maybe even serve as a channel to deliver spiritual support and guidance to those in need. So I do feel you may have this energy or sense that you're not of earth uh, or you just not belonging, not always feeling understood. I just get the sense that you may be a really beautiful dreamer and you may have these beautiful visions, uh, energies around you, but it can make it difficult to relate or you attract certain individuals that are drawn to this energy, this frequency, this light, but they, they themselves don't live from light or they themselves don't understand who and what you are. 
Now, we also have beyond the threshold of fear. So for some of you, I feel as though you're ascending to a new level in terms of not only love, but allowing love to guide you. I see with a star here, a wish coming true. And I do feel for many of you, it's a brand new beginning. I see you starting a whole new world, whole new chapter, perhaps starting a completely different venture and really coming to alignment with your spiritual destiny. I do get the sense of, it's almost as though your, your frequency or your energy is very sensitive. So when you're in perhaps low vibrational settings or when you're around others who are very much in this energy of fear and worry and doubt, it almost leads you to, I want to say, disengage or question the light within yourself. It's almost as though those fears can more easily penetrate your mind because of your sensitivity, because I feel like you may not have the protection or the boundaries that others experience. So for some of you, these new beginnings with this tower could involve you moving away from something that was quite toxic or something that just didn't serve you anymore. It could also be, I think, for this group as well, where you work and the environment and the setting of that workplace can have a huge bearing or impact on how you feel emotionally and spiritually. Now, we do have master number 22 and master number 11. So you may have that in your life path or expression number. But the lion and the deer as well is uh, an omen of a karmic relationship. Someone that's either entered or will enter your life that you've spent many incarnations with. And I feel as though this person is a star seed as well. So there is this sense of an affinity and you may both have a love of the stars, astrology. I just feel very mutual kind of interest. And I do feel this perhaps helps you move out of the frequency of fear because perhaps this person also is a great support in terms of encouraging you towards your own visions, your own dreams, and also helping you to feel personally understood. It's almost as though you don't, you don't feel like you're in this world alone. You realize, oh, there are like-minded souls and spirits that can be a part of my journey and can really support and encourage me along my own path. Because I do feel here with Hand of Fatima, there's a sense of you really bringing something to life. I feel for this group, you've got a huge life purpose, a huge mission, but at times you may either doubt it or be confused about what specifically that is. Because again, because of your frequency and the fact you're a star seed, I feel like your energy, your vision, your ideas may be greatly different from the collective. And that's why I feel this group may have a lot of difficulty being in the collective. But I think your crown chakra is trying to communicate to you what exactly that looks like. And if you haven't met this beautiful soulmate or you know, they're currently just entering your life, there's a sense that they may play either an integral part in the work you do, or they encourage and support you to step beyond fear to fully commit to your vision and dream for those of you who are conscious of exactly what that is. Now, with the Princess of Red Poppies, again, it makes me think of tall poppy syndrome, like standing above the crowd. Some people may at times attack you or feel as though you think you're superior, but it's not maybe because you hold yourself back or you're not that comfortable around others. Now, on your end, I don't think at all that's where it's coming from, but it's almost as though because they can't understand you, they misconceive your energy and how you are, how you behave. It's more that you just your energy is vastly different to the collective and you don't fit in with like human life very easily. You may have a lot of trouble with kind of social, social conditions. Uh, you may be quite alternative like marriage or certain archaic concepts may just not resonate with you. Or if you do, for example, want to get married, you may do so in a very different and unconventional way. I just feel it mainstream living isn't for you. Like working a nine to five long term could be quite detrimental to your well being. And that's why I think as well you're receiving messages from the crown in terms of getting your ideas out there. But there is this trait within you that, or for those of you where it resonates, where you kind of, you don't completely hide your light or squash yourself, but you may have been targeted in the past, whether that was through bullying or just being misunderstood constantly, that there's this apprehension about standing out. 
because it draws attention to those differences. So this is really a message around embracing your unique talents, your skills, and being willing to stand out, releasing, moving beyond this threshold of fear that makes you squash or limit yourself in any way because you're here to shine. You're here on this planet at this point in time to share and give birth to this vision. Now, with Daughter of the Red Ten, this is a card of growing beyond old uh, mental conditioning, social conditioning, certain ideas. It's like your man, mind sorry, is expanding, evolving. Uh, anything that would restrict you, restrict that light, restrict that vision is being shed. And we see that with the star coupled with tower. Because again, you're coming into wish fulfillment or this is where you're being nudged and encouraged to focus on. Your crown chakra may be receiving constant downloads in terms of what this looks like. But in order for this to happen, first of all, this tower comes in and wipes away fear or limiting concepts. Or it may also wipe away, for example, a unhealthy workplace, uh, negative friendships, anything that isn't in alignment with your highest destiny. I feel you're receiving guidance to release. Also, I feel for this group, you may be better off having a select few really close friends who you feel are star seeds or who you feel you have a soul affinity with rather than surround yourself in environments where you're misunderstood. Because I feel as though being in those situations and those social settings then trigger you and then it may lead you to kind of not feel as comfortable standing out again. So it's like you get stuck in a cycle. So being really conscious of who you're around in your environment is super important. Because again, I feel like this tower comes in, wipes something away for a new beginning. And this is you really getting grounded and building on your life purpose and taking a lot of physical action towards it. And I do think perhaps this is the beginning of prosperity and financial abundance coming from that vision and dream. Or it could be that you're searching for alternative means of employment because you want to be doing something that's in alignment with your spirit and your inner guidance and also not to be in situations that are incredibly toxic. And with this Ace of Wands, it's also something that you have a lot of passion for. And I'm hearing it helps light up the world. It helps to anchor in and bring in higher vibrations. You could uh, literally be an intuitive, a channel, a healer, an energy worker, a writer who channels it also involves truth telling. But what I'm hearing as well, these truths that you're telling in terms of universal consciousness, they are accurate and, and they are in alignment, but most people may not, or the collective may not yet be at a point where they're able to fully comprehend these truths, which is why as well, if you have been working for a long time on building this vision and prosperity and abundance has been slow coming, that's why, because you're operating on a level or frequency that many people are not yet able to perhaps access or understand. However, I still feel it's important to put your efforts and channel your energy into this work because it's almost as though I feel over the next kind of year or so or coming years that's going to gather momentum and it's really a message of starting small and not not personalizing the pace or the journey of you bringing these truths your wisdom out into the world with the page of cups you're also offering your love you're exposing the depths of who you are and what you have to share in the world Perhaps for some of you as well, you're getting more in touch with your heart. And I also think as the love and sensitivity increases within you, it makes it harder to stay in connection or situations that are lower vibrational. So that's why for some of you, you may literally be feeling like you're, you're somewhat isolated from the external world. You may not want to kind of socialize or be in situations that don't resonate at a soul level. You may be, I feel like you're already spiritually awakened, but ascending to the next level in terms of your spirituality and what that looks like in physical reality. Perhaps you're at a point where you, you're no longer willing to work a job or be in a career that isn't in alignment with your spiritual truth. So there's this movement with the tower away from a specific workplace or environment towards your life purpose and what you love. Because with this six of swords, we see you leaving perhaps many things behind in order to focus on this or have this new beginning to build this from the ground up, to do and engage in whatever sets your soul on fire is what I'm hearing. I feel most of your happiness and joy and satisfaction is going to come through your divine mission. 
Now, I do see a beautiful soulmate connection as well, which is an integral part of that, but it's almost like they're a beautiful addition. I do feel what you create and the work you do is everything. And what we see at the end of this journey is you being completely bare, transparent, vulnerable, because at the end of the day, that's precisely why you came to this world and you creating the world that suits you. The, the environment, the lifestyle, the career that is in alignment with your truth and your soul. So that's all I have for you. If this reading resonates, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. How grateful. So for those of you drawn to these cards, I feel as though for some of you, you may be in this place where you feel as though what you're desiring isn't manifesting at the speed or in the time frame you've hoped for, or you may be at this kind of crossroads energy where you're feeling called to go in a different direction. You are leaving something behind. I feel multiple meanings because with this four of wands and nine of coins, for some of you that are in a commitment, I feel like you may be choosing to leave it behind. It's a, very much a romantic relationship I'm feeling. For others of you, I'm hearing if you're currently single, you may be coming into divine union. So it's kind of read both ways. But for most, I feel this beautiful energy around your passions, your life path, what you want to manifest. But with de Desert Heart, Harvest, there could be this sense that it's not um, it's not manifesting at the fullest potential or there's a need to make a choice regarding your path how to progress how to further I want to say further your progress or just be able to receive what you've hoped for and what you desire because I feel all this uh, energy this passion you're lit up with what you want to do but for some reason with this page of coins I feel like it's staying at a page it's not growing or expanding at the level you desire mm. and with the queen of cups as well I think for many of you this is where your heart is but there's something either in how you're approaching it or how it's progressing that needs to change in order for you to have the outcome you desire. I do see this, this purpose, this passion, whatever you're building and creating will be successful, but it's almost as though you may be receiving messages from the crown around how you're pursuing it, how to kind of perhaps, I want to say have a gentler touch, because for many of you, I feel like with this passion and with this purpose, you may be like, you're totally invested like you have no doubts this is where your heart is this is what you want to do in the world however when we when we love something so much and our energy is like locked in and fixed on it sometimes that can manifest as what i want to say is rigidity or it doesn't allow the divine to kind of seep in and help move things in our favor so we also have she tames by laying down the staff and rope so this is a card of surrendering uh hard work effort kind of charging ahead making things happen and having and being more receptive to the heart space so perhaps the divine is also saying with this queen of cups that you can anchor and hold the frequency of love and stay centered in what you desire to do and what you want to do but have um, be less fixed on the outcome or be less fixed in how it can come to be because there's something about how it's being approached that I'm hearing maybe kind of holding off blessings. But I also think with the three of pentacles and strength, you may be further developing your skills. Really, I, I see that energy of like fine tuning your talents, fine tuning your abilities, and that then enables things to progress and for you to move forward. I also think with De Desert Harvest, this can be a card as well, where we're going through certain lessons and growth opportunities and the path looks barren, but spirit is also testing our commitment and testing our willingness to change and grow. So for some of you, I feel as though you may be asked to change, shift, and saying how much are you willing to personally transform in order to have this dream manifest? Now, with the right choice, again, for some of you, I feel as though it's making a choice in terms of how you pursue this passion, how you go ahead. Some of you may even be feeling with that desert harvest. Should I just give up? Is this not my path? And I feel really strongly, don't give up. This is your life's purpose. What you're passionate about is exactly what 
is in alignment for you and your heart and soul. However, there's a different way. For others of you, it may be a choice in terms of this Four of Wands energy. It may be a choice about a commitment. It may be a, a decision in terms of focusing on life, purpose, passion, and doing whatever it takes to manifest this dream versus love. Because for some of you, I do see the potential for you leaving a connection. For others of you, when you're further established in your life purpose, that brings you into contact with a divine partner. Blood angel. Mm. Again, I feel this overwhelming passion. I feel for this group, you have a really huge heart. And your heart chakra, I'm hearing, is your like power place. That's where you manifest or that's the most effective way to manifest. However, you may still be kind of stuck in the mind a little bit or still having certain fears and doubts or just a, a really concrete idea of how things need to come about. And the divine is saying, can you just focus on the love of vocation? Can you focus on the passion, what you love to do, be in the moment with your skill, with your talent, with what you're creating, and then enable the outcome to manifest itself? Now, with the Cloak of Christ, again, we're seeing transformation. There's some sort of healing and transformation that either happens in terms of your approach, but just happens as well within your own being that enables your dreams to bloom, that enables your your highest goal and vision to completely manifest. So this is also allowing that inner alchemy, understanding that in order to manifest something in this physical realm, we need to be at that place of consciousness and within that energy frequency to receive and achieve that goal and result. So again, page of coins, queen of cups, do not at all surrender your love of what you're doing or your belief in the possibility of it manifesting because it will manifest. However, you are being guided and you may really be feeling at the crown chakra level or you may be receiving kind of downloads and transmissions around anchoring in the heart space. Kind of, You may even experience things that trigger you emotionally and really I feel the divine is trying to anchor you back in this energy and saying get out get out of that fixed mental energy and drop back into the heart remember why you started this for some of you with desert harvest it's been such a long journey it's i'm seeing like almost walking along a desert for like four years and you're like when is there going to be some water like when is there going to be some sort of life that comes from this vision or project so it's really still holding your vision and not allowing perhaps the lack of progress or the lack of abundance coming in to lead you to stop or quit however you are being guided to change your approach or change how you move through the world and again with this four of wands for some of you i feel like you may decide that your your heart is with this passion with this purpose not that you can't have love and success you can have both however i feel like your heart may be more strongly linked here and not where you've been this could be leaving a home behind, a location to move somewhere more in alignment with your dreams. But for some of you, I feel like this is a romantic partner that your heart may no longer be in it and you're really wanting, or at the very least, you may be wanting to focus more on establishing and building yourself, your career, your abundance, success in your own right. For others of you, I feel like this four of wands comes along after you've gained traction with this vision and with this dream. Yeah, because we have seven of wands. You may also feel this need of to have to protect this dream. You may have others around you that aren't really supportive of what you're building or they tell you if it was going to manifest, it would have already done so. Like you need to give up, you need to quit. Others of you, I feel like you, you sense that you're jumping through hoops trying to make this happen, that you've had to sacrifice so much. But again, this heavy energy of the seven of wands and ten of wands makes it it places a lot of kind of dead weights on what you're trying to bring to life and that's why i think spirit is saying there's this need to really heal also take take uh well, i should say acknowledge how much you've done and the work you've done acknowledge how much strength and fight and power you have but almost perhaps take a break with that cloak of christ surrender into yourself really listen to the divine and spirit and almost recharge because what's going to happen is all these wands are going to drop and then you're able to come back 
to your passion, your purpose, what you're pursuing. For some of you, it could be a career you're very passionate about. But I definitely feel it's around abundance or the physical. And it's, it's almost like you come back with a renewed passion and focus on harnessing your skill. Your focus is on shifting or changing what you can control which is the quality of work you produce the time and effort you put into it rather than focusing on outcome expectation why hasn't it manifested you're back in the flow of what you love to do and that almost starts this project moving again i also think this project may have been a long time coming because first of all you're able to achieve a certain level of mastery with this pursuit this business this skill and also you are strengthening yourself and gaining strength within your own being. So it was preparing you for what was to come. So that's all I have for you. If this reading resonates, please like and subscribe and I will see you soon.